Hi there, I'm Bob Dietrich. I'm here with Camille Quartz. Camille is a professional photographer. Camille, welcome. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. And today we are going to talk about your headshot. You know, some people think you can just walk into a studio, get your headshot done, and then post it on the internet or, or any kind of professional materials that you may have or whatever. But this is going to be your first impression to a lot of people. And we want to make sure we get this right. You don't want to throw your money down the drain and have to do it over again. So take a few minutes and watch this video. And we're going to take you through a couple important steps to help you take the best professional headshot you can. So let's talk to, to uh, Camille a little bit. Camille, how long have you been in the industry? I've been in the industry over 25 years. And I've had my own studio now for 24. So Wow. OK, great. And I've seen some of your work. It's fantastic. Thank you. So Camille, tell us a little bit about why we need a good headshot these days. Well, we are in an image saturated culture. Whether you're employed or you own your own business or you participate in any social media, you know that your image is being requested. And so often we don't have control over the images right. that are being posted. Maybe our friends are taking them, maybe we're taking them of ourselves. Having a professional headshot taken is a way you can control uh, your presentation. That sometimes that image is the first impression someone's going to have when they're looking at your website or they're going to your social media. So it's important that you know how to uh, convey your branding, the essence of your personality by having some control over the image that you put out there. I'm going to show you some slides of some individuals who came to me requesting a professional headshot. So on the left it's going to be some, some samples uh, of what yes. other people did and on the right yes. will be yours. So yes. let's slide through and take a look. Yes, some of my clients came to me and they said this is what I'm currently using on my Facebook page or mm -hmm. my social media or on my website and I thought well let me see if I can help you improve upon this. Sometimes people don't know lighting, sometimes right. the images are out of focus and sometimes they're just poor quality. So right. you need to present yourself in a better, uh, your better image. So I know there, there are several things that people want to know about headshots. One of them is about upgrading their headshots or updating. Can you tell us what the difference is and why they would want to do either one of those? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I have clients come to me and say, you know, I've been using the same headshot. It was a beautiful headshot 10 mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. but we need something more current. Really, you should consider updating your headshot at least every three years. That's usually a good, a good standard. Uh, to go by. Right. The other thing that I think is that if people often need to consider upgrading their headshot. It's just not a matter of, uh, well, I just had it recently taken. Is the quality good? Is the lighting good? Uh, what you're wearing, is it appropriate? So that's what I mean by upgrading a headshot. Yeah, and I think the first thing that's so important to know is that a headshot really is your head and shoulders. This is obviously not a headshot. It is a woman in her work environment and it's busy and what she's wearing is busy and it doesn't really introduce you to her. Uh, I think this is often a mistake that is made that we are presenting uh, an entire body or half your body or three quarters of your body in a headshot should really be a headshot head and shoulders. So let's talk about what to wear then. You know, um, I, I have heard that you're supposed to wear solid colors and things, and I've had striped shirts and stuff like that. W what, what do you wear when you, when you show up to a headshot, and what other clothes do you want to bring to make sure that you're, you're taking the highest quality headshot? Well, something that I tell my clients is it's not about the clothing. The clothing is just the prop. It's right. not intended to be the focal point. Your face, your your head and shoulders, who you are, is intended to be the focal point. The clothing is just the prop. So I'm going to show you some examples of what not to wear. Obviously, bold patterns and prints that are very distracting. Something that I always encourage my clients to do is step back, put your outfit on, and if your eye is continually drawn to a pattern or a stripe, then chances are pretty good it's going to do that in the photograph, and that's not where we want the viewer's eye to go. Even men, the handkerchiefs or their ties can be too loud, can be very distracting. Prints on top of stripes, anything that's distracting to the eye, takes your eye away from the actual subject's face, is distracting. Here's a good example of a solid color, but it has a very 
a decorative pattern, and it's also a reflective. Mm -hmm. So that also can be very, very distracting. Once again, you want to be able to know that all clothing should only be the prop, have every leading line going right up to your face. Got it. So we're going to show some examples. So when do patterns and prints actually work? Oh, great. Let's take a look. So if you are wearing a jacket and you might have a striped shirt underneath, that can be very subtle and very uh, non-distracting. Got it. Uh, again, just a very simple print. It doesn't seem to uh, be distracting. It's not taking away from her face. It's very, uh, very small. So when do patterns and prints work? When just kind of consider when your clothing, uh, the surroundings, none of it is taking away from your face. Got it. So you should always try your clothes on and make sure that, that your face is the focal yes. point. And if, if your clothes are like the main deal, then you want to And it is such a huge that. mistake because we all want to gravitate to our favorite outfit, but that doesn't necessarily relate well to your best headshot. Got it. So let's talk a little bit about like accessories. Well, let's begin with talking about necklines. Okay, great. Um, there are some ideas of considering necklines. Sometimes women will wear rounded collars. It can make your neck look very um, thick, and that's not where, what we want to do. We want to keep your neck very slim so that you can um, have your face be more prominent. Also, ladies, be careful with that neckline. It can sometimes be a little plunging, and we don't want the eye to... Um, drift to a place where we don't want it to go for our viewer. Got it. Got so it. let's think about um, what is a clean neckline. Just mm -hmm. a nice uh, leading line that takes your eye right up to the face. The clothing is not distracting. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's very simple. It's very elegant, and it puts a lot of emphasis right on your eyes and your expression. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not you choose to have. Um, no blouse underneath the jacket, you've still got that clean leading line going up to your face, or even putting a blouse underneath your jacket will still have the same effect of that leading line. So Camille, tell us a little bit about jewelry and accessories, like, you know, when's the right time to wear them, when not? I know. Jewelry and accessories is a prop. It's not intended to be the focal point. You'll see that women often like to wear scarves as ex accessories, but that is something that will distract your eye. Right, I can really see that. Yeah, jewelry's the same. You know, often people will wear big, bold, junk, chunky jewelry, right. and that also can be distracting. Right. Um, when is it appropriate to use jewelry and accessories? Well, if it's going to add to the style. Mm. If you're adding a piece of jewelry that fits very well with maybe right. The look and right. it's not distracting right. and it's not taking away from the actual uh, client then it's something that you can wear right so keep your jewelry simple cleaner lines if you notice in this slide she's wearing the, just a really uh, simple necklace and right. simple earrings it keeps mm -hmm. the line very clean yeah yeah good the men as well the accessories for men is not to make the tie too bold too mm -hmm. loud um, just keep it understated. If it's too distracting, the viewer will want to look at the tie and they won't want to look at the person. Right, and from a business standpoint, you got to keep in mind that you want them to remember your face, not your tie. Exactly, that's exactly correct. Yeah. And that's the whole kind of point of getting the headshot. <laughs> it is, is yes. Having it them is. remember you yes. and what you look like and build that association to it. So yes. well, let's talk about like what colors to wear then. Let's dig into that. Can you that, tell us a little bit about colors? That's a great topic. You know, there's a lot of psychology behind um, colors to wear. Mm -hmm. This next slide shows an example of probably not what to wear, what, mm -hmm. what not to wear. Be careful about having clothing that is too close to your skin tone mm. or it's brighter than your skin tone mm. because people will always want to look at the brightest spot in the photograph. Therefore, be careful the white shirt or, or the clothing that looks too much like your skin tone. So don't right. be afraid of color. Right. Um, pinks and corals and turquoises, a lot of psychology behind the colors. We know that red is uh, stimulating. It, uh, it's, a, it's a stimulus color. We mm -hmm. know that uh, purple is a spiritual color. We know that blue it can be a very trusting color. We know the strongest colors in the corporate world are navy, black, and charcoal gray. So let's talk about the white background. I know white backgrounds can be a little different. Can you tell us how, how the white background might be a little different than normal backgrounds? Well, I know it's popular. It's mm -hmm. popular for people to want to use a white background. Mm -hmm. 
And my suggestion to that is if you are going to be photographed in front of, front of a white background mm -hmm. to uh, make sure your clothing is not, again, contrasting with that background. Keep your uh, clothing white. White on white can be very pretty. It puts a lot of warmth in your skin tone. Mm -hmm. So that works very well. Even a white background that's been toned down, something that goes more into a little bit of a gray tone, that mm -hmm. is a white background that doesn't have the light on it. That right. will also help to bring and not have such a stark contrast. Right, right, right. Um, if you go to the next slide now, this is kind of a, a sample that I wanted to use of what, what do you have when you have white on white on white? You've got white beard, white hair. Well, in that particular case, you might want to choose a background that maybe help separate mm. you a little bit from a white background right. that actually gives you some color to your skin. So contrasting the white background, tell us about a black background. How does that work? Again, black backgrounds are very, very popular. I would suggest that uh, be careful not to wear a white blouse on a back black background. Okay. Um, I think that keeping into those darker color tones, mm. whether it be black or charcoal gray or navy or green and um, sometimes people think, well, what, well, will I just get lost if I'm just wearing black on black? Well, if the photographer uh, knows how to actually put that background light on or that hair light on, they mm -hmm. can actually separate you from that, that background. Mm -hmm. And if you have really, really, really black hair and you mm -hmm. have really, really black top on and you're going to go up against a black ground background, I maybe would say don't wear a black top if you've got really mm -hmm. dark hair. You might want to go more into a wine or a burgundy color or a dark green or even a dark charcoal to give yourself a little bit of separation. Okay, great. So I know some pictures can be um, where, you know, people want to capture their personality. they got this certain personality they want to try and capture it on film. What is your advice on, on capturing your personality on, on um, you know, headshot or something like that? Well, a headshot is intended to present your best self. It's mm -hmm. intended to introduce and make that first impression. Okay. You want to be able to show an essence of your kindness, your friendliness, your personality through your smile. But body action, um, running, throwing the football, mm -hmm. making silly faces is some sort of attempt to show your personality, but doesn't always convey very well in the best headshot. Well, maybe we can show a few examples. Yes. So let's talk about this first example ladies in red. Um, tell us about that. Is that a good thing? or? or? Well, uh, red is a power color. It's a, a stimulating color, yet she seems to be showing the body language of laughter, of, mm -hmm. of, of um, silliness, and I'm not sure the message she's conveying. Mm. I'm not sure what she's telling me about herself. Oh, okay, so sometimes the colors are not congruent with the body exactly, exactly, language and, exactly. and throw people off. Okay, and then finally, you know, you, you just want to <laughs> love Love yourself, right? Gotta love the result. Love Absolutely. your headshot. And so, um, thank you very much for, for being with us, Camille. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, this has been awesome. And there's some tips for you to use um, as you go out into the world and get that headshot done. And remember, you don't have a second chance to make a first impression. So you want to get this right and invest the right time and money into your headshot. So, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Bob. Thank you.